This is the Motorola Moto G Stylus 2022 disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. We'll also go ahead and remove the stylus. Next, we need to apply heat to the back plate using a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're gonna use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. The back plate is made of plastic. There are 17 Phillips screws that need to be removed. Now the top plastic cover can be lifted up and removed. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off. There are also antenna lines on this plastic cover which are just light gray color lines. Here's a look at the other side. Now that we have access to the battery cable, we're going to disconnect that first. Once the battery cable is disconnected, we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. There are two coaxial cables on the bottom right side of the board that need to be disconnected by popping them off. There's some copper tape covering the front facing camera connector that needs to be peeled off so we can disconnect and remove that. Here's a better look at the 16 megapixel front facing camera. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the main board that needs to be removed. Now the main board can be lifted up and removed. There's an 8 megapixel ultra wide lens, a 50 megapixel wide lens, and a 2 megapixel depth sensor. None of the cameras have OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a secondary microphone located on top, and the LED flash is located next to the ultra wide camera. There's also a liquid damage indicator, which is a white sticker on the main board, and the color is white, indicating there's no liquid damage, meaning no water got inside the phone during our durability test. Taking a look at the back side of the board, the notification LED and proximity sensor are located on top. The ultra wide and wide angle camera connectors are on the back and those can be disconnected by just popping them off. The SIM card and memory card reader is located here. And there's thermal paste on the back shields. Once the removable shields on the back are removed, we can see more thermal paste underneath on top of the processor and RAM, as well as this chip over here. Here's a better look with the thermal paste removed. Now it's time to remove the bottom speaker assembly. There's some graphene film to help transfer heat, and there's another antenna line on the speaker assembly which is this light gray color line. There's a mesh filter over the speaker opening, and here's the speaker itself. On the bottom subboard, there's a flex cable and the two other ends of the coaxial cable that need to be disconnected. There's also a single Phillips screw which is holding down the subboard that needs to be removed. At this point we can lift up and remove the subboard. There's a rubber gasket around the charger port and the headphone jack. And the primary microphone is located underneath the shield. There's also another liquid damage indicator which is a white sticker. And that also remains white indicating no liquid damage in the phone. Here's a look at the other side. To remove the battery there are no pull tabs to help us pry the battery off. So we're going to have to use some isopropyl alcohol and apply some to the edges of the battery and let it sit there for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry the battery off. Here's a better look at the 5000 mAh battery. Once the battery is removed, we can see the flex cable which connects the main board to the subboard, as well as the flex cable for the screen which is routed through an opening in the mist frame. If you need to replace your screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, and then you'd have to remove the screws on the top plastic cover and remove that cover, disconnect the battery cable and the screen cable, pry the battery off giving you access to the screen cable, at that point you'd heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry old screen off, apply new adhesive, 
and reapply your new screen making sure you run the cable through the opening in the midframe and reassemble your phone. The cover over the enclosure of the stylus is held down with adhesive. And here's a look at the inside. Moving on, the vibrator motor is located on the bottom and it's held down with adhesive. And there's a plastic cover on the bottom and top of the microphone openings, which have a mesh filter over the opening of the microphones. Here's a better look at that. The flex cable for the fingerprint reader is located here, and the one for the volume keys is located here. They're both right out through an opening in the midframe, so if you had to replace those, you'd also have to pry the screen off. The earpiece speaker is located on top, and that's also held on with adhesive. And there's one more liquid damage indicator, which is white sticker over here, which is underneath the SIM tray, and the color of that also remains white, indicating no liquid got inside the phone. For the repairability score, I give this phone a 6.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the backplate. Clip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.